Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss about Keynesian macroeconomics in a very simple setup that is two sector model. So a two sector model consists of only household sector and business sector of the economy. It is a very simplified concept or the version of income and output determination of the economy. Now let's first discuss about the assumptions of this model. First of all, there is existence of only two sectors, that is household sector and business sector in the economy. Due to the absence of government intervention in the economy, or there is absence of the government sector, that's why there is no taxes and government expenditure. There is absence of the rest of the world sector, that is the foreign sector. So there is no export and no import in the two sector model. The total profit is distributed as dividend with the zero return earning. It means total profit is distributed as the dividend. Both the product prices and the factor prices are assumed to be constant. The supply of capital and technology are given. So these are the assumptions of this two sector model. Now let's move forward. And this model can be explained under the two approaches. They are aggregate demand, aggregate supply approach, and then saving investment approach. So these are the two approaches under which we are going to discuss about this model. So this model can be explained under the aggregate demand and aggregate supply approach first of all let's discuss about the aggregate demand and aggregate supply approach we can say that in a two sector economy aggregate demand consists of consumption and investment that is aggregate demand is equals to c plus i now look at the figure in the figure, C is the consumption curve, which is upward sloping. It starts from the vertical axis, implying that consumption is not zero at zero level of income. So, because of the positive relationship between the consumption and the level of income, the consumption curve is upward sloping. So this much is autonomous consumption or the distance from the origin to the point of starting of the consumption curve is known as autonomous consumption. That is the consumption at zero level of income. Here investment refers to autonomous investment. Hence aggregate demand curve is parallel to consumption curve that is C plus I curve is parallel to consumption curve. Aggregate supply of final product is GDP. In other words, GDP is the sum total of supply of all the goods and services. So GDP can also be written as Y, which is either consumed or saved. That is Y is equals to C plus S. Yes. Thus, aggregate supply curve is a 45 line showing Y is equals to C plus S at all level of income. Point E is the equilibrium point where aggregate demand curve intersects the aggregate supply curve. Thus, OY is the equilibrium level of income or output. At any level of output, more or less than Y, 
there is no equilibrium in the economy that is there is disequilibrium in the economy at any level of output less than oy aggregate demand is greater than aggregate supply since c plus i curve lies above the c plus s curve when aggregate demand is greater than aggregate supply there will be decline in inventories of goods below the desired level this on intended fall in inventories will induce the firms to expand their output of goods and goods at the desired level this process of expansion in output under the pressure of excess demand will continue till national income is reached at oy On the contrary, the level of national income cannot be because at any level greater than OY, aggregate demand is less than aggregate supply of output. This will cause the increase in inventories of goods with the firms beyond the desired level. This will reduce the total output or national income or national income until the level of oy is reached in this way the market mechanism automatically leads the economy towards the equilibrium position 